Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I intend to send some Kerbal into orbit and I fixed the contracts a little bit for with the newest version of RP2000 0.0.5 and in particular we now have a pass the Karman line contract. It was misconfigured a little bit because of something else I did and so uh, before I was confused about this suborbital spaceflight contract with a pass the Karm Online crude, which seemed to be the same thing. This is actually a repeater contract. So yeah, it's not the main contract to pass the Karm Online or anything like that. And so we have one here now, which that one will require so that you can repeat this feat. And I don't know if we intend to do this or not, but anyway, it's important for making sure that everything flows properly in these uh, contracts that were borrowed from RP0. So yeah, mainly I'm hoping for first crude orbital, but we'll see. Uh, we will see the feasibility of that. I think we are going to try and go straight to the, the Lynx spacecraft instead of using the Mark 1 pod because that's more relevant for the future to have the Lynx spacecraft. And even though it costs a lot, we will be bringing the spacecraft back, right? Hopefully. So, yeah. It's tempting to just use the Mark 1 pod, though. I'll think about that. But I'll time warp until we complete this technology. Now, for RP2000 0.0.5, I've added basic RO compatibility, very basic, for the USI mods and KSB Interstellar Extended. So those configurations will be inside the RP2000 folder in a folder called RO Compatibility. And if you have previously gotten my configurations for KSP Interstellar or USI, you should probably delete those. Those will be hanging out in the Game Data folder. Now they'll be inside the RP2000 folder. So uh, the version of USI, and so I've installed USI and KSP Interstellar Extended in here. The version of USI Exploration Pack, Freight Technologies, FTT, um, Construction, Malamute, and MKS. Those are the five parts that I'm using. And again, there's going to be a mod list in the video description. The version for all of those is 1.3.0.0. And for KSP Interstellar Extended, it's 1.27.3. So those are the specific versions. And really, as far as configuring them for, for this, I've tentatively put some pricing, but it's debatable what prices we should have for these. Probably more expensive for the caribou, uh, which I guess is the Malamute. I forget if the caribou is related to the Malamute and all those things. Yeah, so we have some USI parts. Uh, those are not. That heat pump drill, I'll have to check on. But, and the heat stuff is mostly from KSP Interstellar. So the USI parts are work in progress, except some are currently labeled non-RO because, well, there was another version named something else previously that was <laughs> labeled work in progress RO, but then there's this new part. It's confusing. They keep renaming parts. So I think some of them are resized parts too. So we've got the Tundra modules down here and everything. And they're a decent price, I mean, 63 million, but I mean, that's what that translates to in current dollars, but I think I could probably make them more expensive. We'll see, uh, some of these are more expensive if the, they're the bigger ones or more complicated ones. Uh, so yeah, those are old pricing that I did back in the RP0 days. So th that's pricing that I made for RP0, which I might need to bump up for this. Uh, so yeah, we have many case, uh, USI parts and the KSP Interstellar parts I didn't price because that's impossible. <laughs> so um, so the KSP Interstellar parts, I let them have their own particular price uh, based on what KSP Interstellar thought would be a good idea. And we'll review that as we go along instead of me trying to figure out what would be an appropriate price from the beginning because I have no idea how to price a, well, I mean, a circular solar photovoltaic receiver, okay, you will beamed infrared power though. So it could get complicated. Some of these I haven't uh, marked RO yet. That's just 
a matter of time because uh, I had to go through it's it's a lot of parts. Uh, so trying to figure out which ones are uh, legitimate. I mean, some of them ne will never get marked RO. EM drive and mock effect drive, forget it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, these two these two little fellows are gonna be non RO. They're they're worse than the warp drive for heaven's sakes. So somewhere around there ought to be warp drives. Yeah, there's an Alcubierre drive upgrade. Uh, I consider those more likely than the EM drive and mock effect drive. So anyway, we'll have to take a look at things. And there's a command module there. That's uh, a very heavy command center, all right. Okay, so our tech tree is more filled up is the point. And that gives us something to look forward to. And But I still need to do more configuration of it. And some of these obviously need to be more expensive. And I'll think about how to do that. But yeah, it's a lot to digest over in this segment of the tech tree. Right now, we're just down here. So uh, there is one thing to mention about KSB Interstellar, and that is that in order to make it work out, there needs to be a change to Realism Overhaul itself. There's one configuration in Realism Overhaul called ro underscore engines dot config. And one of the things it tries to do is get rid of tweak scale on everything that produces thrust. That does not work for KSP Interstellar. So RP2000 will have a rewrite of that config. It'll just overwrite that config in order to get rid of that tweak scale provision so that KSP Interstellar can work properly. Otherwise, you won't be able to scale things up to the right size or anything like that. After all, the KSP Interstellar parts are meant to be tweakable. So anyway, all that being said, we are going to do a whole lot of time warping so that we can do some crew missions. All right, so I've done the time warping, and now I will make my fateful decision. I'll go ahead with the Lynx S Neo spacecraft, even though the Mark One pod looks really juicy. <laughs> it's it would be convenient. In a pinch, we'll go to it. But all right, so now we've got this cabin, and we'll go with the whole Lynx deal, which means we need the heat shield, we need the aero cap. We need the shell. To be honest, the spacecraft, the cabin itself has plenty of heat tolerance uh, because the RCS ports poke out and otherwise it might be in trouble. So yeah, uh, whether you need the shell or not, that's just for some semblance of legitimacy. Now Kerbals cannot EVA out of this when it has the shell on it, so that is the downside. Well, except this version, yeah. Yeah, I did not have the, this is not a pass-through version. So yes, they cannot EVA out when the shell is on. Okay, so parachutes though seem important. Uh, well, I'm somewhat worried about the air cap collider if the parachutes go like this. Oops, I might have to review the collider on this too. But I think previously on a checkout, the parachute, uh, the aero cap separated properly, so can help. Okay, parachutes. I'll just keep that stuff the same. Uh, apply to symmetry counterparts. Okay. All right, we have parachutes. We have aero cap. So that's what we're going to have to launch, and it's 6.3 tons. I forgot to mention while I was on the tech tree before that I think I have solved the procedural fairing problem uh, that I had where we couldn't make fairings larger than 1.5 meters. So now the upgrade for two, uh, the problem was that the upgrades were too far deep into the tech tree because it was meant more for stock. So I, I've moved them so that the 2.75 meter is in basic rocketry. General rocketry, we get four meter. Oddly enough, from that the next leap in the upgrade uh, size is 12 meters and I forget where I put it uh, it looks like advanced construction so 12 meters you need advanced construction somewhere around there's the infinite one but we don't have to worry about that for now let me just check that we actually get those varying sizes with those upgrades uh, it seemed like there was an unlock cost for the upgrades so we will do that, obviously. 
I don't know. I think maybe we have to do it in the tech tree, or do we have to do it at all? Let me see. Uh, looks like we have to do it, uh, pay for the upgrade. Now, there have been changes to the different kinds of experience that we get. Do I even have to pay for this upgrade if I pay for this upgrade? I don't know. Let me see. Okay, so I, I, ba I paid for the 4 meter one. <laughs> this is weird. Okay, yeah, well, it looks like I don't have to pay for the first one if I pay for the second, so all right. Um, I'll call that fixed for now. Let me proceed with making the launch system for the Lynx, which requires a 4 meter thing, so... Yep, important that we do that. Well, I'm contemplating sort of a risky design where I have the deorbit pack or the service module, if you will, just in a hat on the top here. We don't need that much. We're not doing a whole lot. So we have a decoupler here, a tank, and then the engine in here, which is a 12 kilonewton thruster. It's uh, the Shearstrut engine, 12 kh. It has 40 ignitions, 314 vacuum ISP using MMH and MON3, and pressure fed. So we make sure we have a high pressure tank and we have cross feed through that bearing base. So that's that idea. However, well, that, that's a little bit complicated all on its own. But also we need to think about the thrusters on the Lynx spacecraft itself. It actually uses methane and oxygen by design. So that's for re-entry. And right now that means that either we're going to use those thrusters for add to control in orbit or we're going to add, we are going to add some additional ones that can use MMH and MON3, and I think I'll unlock these 40 Newton ports. It's not a whole lot, but it's something. And we gotta try and stick them on here. Sort of like the Gemini nose cone ports. It's not great for a docking situation or anything. Um, yeah, this, this whole service module idea is not ideal for docking. Definitely. In the process of trying to design the rocket, I have encountered the fact that we still don't have advanced rocketry and the nicer engines. Even though we've, you know, uh, paid the science, we still haven't finished unlocking it thanks to Kerbal Construction Time. So we need to make a very complicated and tenuous rocket. And in order to do that, I really, really need radial decouplers, which we also don't have because we haven't finished unlocking stability. So. It's either a matter of doing stability, and you know, it, it makes sense that a uh, beginning rocket company isn't going to have real decouplers. After all, when you take a look at all the start startup uh, rocket companies, they're just doing single stick. They're not trying to do any radial decoupling, so it is a complicated thing. Uh, so, advanced rocketry would take a long time. I think we're going to go with stability and wait on the advanced rocketry. So, we're just going to prioritize that, get our radial decouplers, and go with the design that I was intending on. All right, well, I took pains to build this monstrosity of a rocket. You can see somewhat Soyuz stylings. We needed 12 of these SE 2020 engines because they're the most powerful engine we've got. Uh, 235 kilonewtons. And then here we used four of the SE-2006Vs and yeah, all for not really, because it's going to take 878 days to build it. So it might be overdoing it. As far as Delta V is concerned, it would be fine-ish. Fine-ish. It would take a while to get to orbit, but it would work as long as we didn't lose any engines. Of which, let me remind you, we have 12 down there and 4 up here. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's tenuous. The problem is uh, the amount of time, well, I mean, we could build it first and then pick up the contracts, right? Now, let me just not save this. I've saved the rocket as it is. So we have the boosters. I mean, it's troublesome to get that much Delta V out of a rocket with such minuscule engines. But basically, if we tried, uh, if I tried to do an uncrewed test, I could do this successful re-entry contract. It wouldn't pay for the whole test, but 
as long as we recover the capsule and pay for it. But that duration is only 365 days. It takes us too long to build it. Past the Carmine line crude, uh, we have enough time. So if we do it crude and not uncrewed, we have enough time to fulfill it. I mean, uh, if we pick them up immediately. But I guess we don't have to pick them up immediately, come to think of it. So we could wait. We could pick all... Uh, oh, this might specify uncrewed. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, we'll do an... <laughs> it's so horrible that we will do an uncrewed test and bite the cost of it and the time it takes. Since we only have one build slot, we can't build another one in parallel anyway. We would have to unlock the VAB, which would cost us most of our money. Uh, a lot of things would cost, cost us a lot of money, like performing EVAs would cost a lot of money too. So, yeah, this is an interesting choice that we have here. Honestly, by the time we build it, we will have the better rocket technology. <laughs> so, hmm. Maybe we should just wait, right? If we build it... Oh, it kept that appearing off. If we build it... Now, just the pod is... I mean, the pod and that stuff up there. This is 121,000 already. I mean, we're talking about $120 million for a crew capsule that can carry three people. It's not unreasonable. It's probably cheaper than it ought to be. We need to spend more upgrade points. Let's see what we can do about the build time if we spend a bit more on those. Still, our budget isn't great if we got to do a lot of these crude missions, so we better watch out. Okay, all VAB. 3.1 we can get it to. I'll save the 400,000. 683 days, and most of the time is the pod, which, again, uh, actually sort of makes sense. So, yep. I suppose we could actually just start working on the pod and then build the rocket separately, couldn't we? Yeah, let's, let's say we just build the pod and then we can edit it, right? I guess, I think. This probably won't change too much. It looks awkward, but still, I don't intend to change it too much. Maybe the slope we can fix. Um, yeah, not not the most wonderful thing, and we don't really have a launch escape system. Let's not talk too much about that. Intent fate. Uh, I'll make this a little bit underutilized here. We don't need that much. In fact, a lot underutilized. Though they, the thruster on the top is not that inefficient, so maybe that'll be fine. Okay, so we are going to go with this and we're going to just wait. Uh, assume that we're going to build a better rocket than I had down there. I mean, that might have worked, but I was nervous about it. And I'll prioritize advanced rocketry, but really most of this will be done by the time we get that pod. We do have some science to spend. Okay, 16 days until it's ready. I don't know how it's going to deal with it if I edit it now and add the rocket. Let's see what kind of rocket we can put on it. Well, now we have some interesting engine choices. We have the Engine 2 Vacuum, that by Launcher Space, 365 Vacuum ISP, according to them. Uh, that's a tough push, but uh, kerosene and oxygen. Uh, or we could go with the more expensive uh, Hydrolox option here. Much more efficiency, but much more expensive, as you might imagine, uh, compared to a not Hydrolox engine. Uh, what was that? There we go, the 2040, 270 kilonewton, uh, and 449 vacuum ISP. Advantageous, but of course we'd still need fairly large tanks too. Not that the tanks cost much right now. That's a uh, tempting sea level engine. Not the greatest sea level ISP, but this one has better thrust and is kerosene. 
but it's more expensive because of the higher thrust. Efficiency wise, they're not too far off from each other. So, uh, but this one is heavier. So the 2100 is heavier. Maybe we want the 2060 instead to be lighter, slightly more efficient, but not as powerful. Yep, I think we'll go kerosene, oddly kerosene upper stage. I'm gonna try tilting them a bit so that just in case one fails, we'll have backup. I'm not doing anything too fancy until I know it works though. Oh, we'll do aluminum lithium as well. All right, in deference to our budget, I think we'll go with the methane one simply because it takes less money to unlock and pay for. And it'll take less build time too, because that's tied to the cost of it, as far as I remember. Okay, well, that's a lot simpler than our other rocket, which makes me happy. Uh, the top of it doesn't make me tremendously happy, but I'll take it for now. Can we make that shorter? Um, I've got it on base auto shape off and nose shape off. We're not doing any auto shaping here. Maybe I can make it a little bit shorter. As long as the engine doesn't protrude, it should be fine, right? It would be bad if we lose the engine, though. Yeah, I think that's okay. We've got parachutes. It's got to take 210 extra days to build. We were pretty close to finishing it already, so... All right, we'll try it. I think we'll even try it with Jeb, though. If it doesn't work out, we're going to the Mark 1 pod and send Val on that one. So... We'll make sure that picking up the contracts after building the rocket is okay. First thing, first crude orbital. That is what we're trying to do. Past the Karman line will happen. And successful re-entry is not going to happen because there's... It's not uncrewed, so we're not picking that up. Uh, so other than that, that's all we can do right now. Now, one thing I wanted to do is uh, make sure that we have limited the amount of food, water, and oxygen is, that is on there because we don't have three crew. <laughs> so we do, and we're not expecting them to go to the moon, which was this was originally outfitted for. I think I might add some solar panel or something. I think the internal time will be enough, but... Oh, by the way, the curve around there is because the shell was originally made for the, for the full-size links. So I'm not going to have it top those off, but I'll have to remember to unlock those. Oh... Yeah, yeah let's just rewrite... how much is in there. It's safer. So 66, 44, and all that business. Okay, that's better. And some surface mount solar panels. I haven't fixed the fact that our solar panel... Oh, do we have any new solar panels? Oh, we do. Those would probably be more appropriate. But... How much power do we get from these? 78 watts. Well, okay, not that much. So, we'll need bigger solar panels sometime. These aren't the greatest either, though. This one is fine, but I don't think it'll fit. 5 meters squared? No. So, okay, we'll, we'll just have the existing ones as backup. They're tiny, though. And not really meant to go... Well, we'll put it on the procedural tank here. Not the most convincing idea ever, but it's only three hours. We can deal with it. All right, rolling out. It takes four days to roll out right now. Okay, and we do get to pick uh, 
Let's let's remove these two. Just Jeb, just Jeb. Well, our electric charge is already running out. <laughs> I guess we'll try to launch in the dark. There's no difference in particular. Did I forget launch clamps? Okay, let's just go. <laughs> Uh, this, this is, I, I actually forgot the launch clamps, guys. All right. Mm, that's bad, of course, but ignition. Oh, okay, and shut down. <laughs> yep, I'm quicker than the computers. All right, let's, uh, let's roll this back here. Maybe recover active vessel. Well, this bodes well. Okay, editing. Okay, uh, we'll just straight up. I mean, even though we actually have more ignitions on these engines. It doesn't really say that the engine that was busted is busted. We could maybe have, like, relit it. I don't know, but I'm not taking any chances, darn it. We are going to put new ones. And this time we will put launch clamps. I don't believe I should need ullage motors for the upper stage, but shoot. <laughs> uh, let's let's put four of these little SRBs. For some reason, a nose cone doesn't want to go on to things anymore. Yeah, see. What's up with that? Well, I wanted to close off that top node, but I'll just leave it be. Hopefully it's small enough. Honestly, the why don't we just send robots people do have a point. <laughs> I better watch out for that satellite in a polar orbiter of Earth contract. Alright, let's try it. Fill tanks and launch, huh? That's just in case people try to cheat the mass limits, I suppose. Well, it's nighttime again somehow. But now that we have launch clamps, we're not wasting electric charge, so let's just time warp to daylight then. Didn't take too long. I'm sure Jeb can Al Shepard this situation. Okay, here we go again. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. We lost another engine. Okay, whoop. Um, activate engine? Okay, well maybe we can still go because we have extra ignitions on these. So, ignition. Test light doesn't kill it completely apparently. And launch. That would not be approved by NASA, but here we are. All right, we are past the speed of sound. Hang through max Q. We don't even have a, have a name for this rocket at all. At least, uh, I guess we can call it the Lynx rocket then, because we'll go Soviet on this and every rocket gets named after its first payload or something. Roughly speaking, I think without the solar panels, the Lynx has about 10 hours worth of battery. Ah, I didn't really check about G-forces, did I? Uh, can these throttle down? I, I forget. Nope. <laughs> we should probably shut two down or something. Okay, separation and ignition. Oh, well, we've got two of these. Plenty of Delta V, actually, somehow. Well, always like a surplus. Give us room for a proper service module later. Maybe even a launch escape system. It should all be very manageable. We should be able to hold this altitude pretty well. We'll deorbit this stage and use the little engine at the top to complete orbit. If for some reason that engine fails, we can just come straight back down. Or use RCS. Okay, so that'll deorbit. And let's just make sure all the staging is right. Okay, 
separation. All right. And a little fairing at the top separation. Okay. Oh, a little bit of pause. I think it's saving. Okay. And the engine there. Okay. Now we have to turn around, orbit retrograde, and see that our RCS actually works. And we probably want a little bit more time. Maximum stopping time for maybe. Yeah, that'll be fine. We have not completed a contract yet. Okay, firing the engine. And we actually have to complete the orbit. So we'll wait two orbits. That's not quite a one and a half hour orbit. Let's let's just go for the full one and a half hour orbit. We have 38 more ignitions on there. Okay, we'll see that. All right. It probably doesn't matter for the contract or anything, but in incidentally, because we've got the shell around the links, sometimes it can be hard to get to just the links itself. Uh, so you can right click on this little RCS icon for it. That'll get the spacecraft itself. So. Yep, right now it's RCS is disabled. That'll just be for re-entry. It's probably got too much as it is for re-entry, but anyway. We are making an orbit. Uh, can we do any science at all? Let's see. Uh, it doesn't even have a crew report option, really. That's interesting. I'll have to see about that. Completing orbit. Okay, we have done that, and now it is time to come back down. And in order to get as much value back from this as possible, we will deorbit at Australia in the hope that we will get close to the west coast, even though it will be nighttime. Okay, prograde actually. This Lynx does not have a descent mode. I may want to change that. Might want to add that in. I think it had a descent mode before, but they changed how descent mode works. So I have to redo that module. Okay. We use nothing even close to the capacity of this, but it is time to get rid of it. So we'll be activating the RCS on the spacecraft itself. And that should be the decoupler to get rid of that little service module pack. I mean, we could have kept it if we slapped the parachutes on the top right there instead. Might have even been safer than separating off the aero, uh, the um, little aero cap. Might consider that for some other time. Just keep the aero cap and put the parachutes on top there. But did not think about that this time. So. All right, off goes the little service module. That was OK. Well, at least it's separated. <laughs> OK, and retrograde. Oh, is that the moon? That's probably the moon. Coming in. And we will actually be in daylight if the hints of the sun are accurate. Yep. Approaching Baja California. But uh, maybe we'll end up right at Houston. Maybe we'll end up in Mexico. Not sure. Well, Mercury there too. Up oh, there's Jupiter. All the planets are coming to see Jeb hopefully succeed here. <laughs> we definitely need don't need that much liquid methane and oxygen in this. That's actually mainly for if I mess up the trajectory coming back from the moon and and we bounce off 
and need to do a correction to our resulting periapsis. It's complicated. So I had a thought in mind for why I would want that much, but for this purpose, we don't. Okay, we are slowing down very quickly now. And we are past 7 G's, approaching 8. And it does look like Mexico it is. I think we'll be on this side of the Rio Grande. Jeb may lose some teeth on the landing. Do Kerbals have teeth? I think so, yeah. Checking F3, 7.8 Gs, by the way. Arming the chutes. Don't ask me about the ablator. <laughs> I have no idea why it doesn't seem to... Oh, of course, these are copied from lunar rated heat shields, so there's that. But anyway, arrow cap off. Well, that worked fine. Okay, full parachute deployment. And five meters per second. Rough terrain, but given the way the bump map is stretched in real solar system, it doesn't ever get too rough, I don't think. Okay. And... We fulfilled the two contracts, and hopefully we'll get some money back for the pod. <laughs> okay, recover vessel. Um, recover to VAB. So that means we get the part back, right? Right? I guess we might as well try that, or should I go normal recovery and get the money? I'll try this recover to VAB, if that means that we get the part back. But somewhat, I feel like there should be some refurbishment thing. I don't know what the rules are. Let's try this. I, did we get funds back? Oh, well, no. That, the amount of money that we've gotten back is from the contracts. So, no, th these funds did not come back to us. We could have gotten 92,000, okay? Okay. So now, presumably, we can go edit and slap on another rocket or something. Do we have to replace the parachutes? Probably, right? I'm not sure. So, yeah, normal recovery, we would have gotten 92,000 like this. We get 116,000. So, that's good. Well, cancel edits for now. All right. Complete success. I sort of feel happy that I didn't go with the other rocket. <laughs> All right. Well, we we're still pretty lucky. Yep. It only gets more interesting from here. But I'm not going to decide what I'm going to do next time. I've had a lot of fun here. We will think about that when I start next time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.